everybody, welcome to the Futurum Tech Webcast podcast. I'm your host, Daniel Newman, Principal Analyst, Founding Partner at Futurum Research. Excited for this insider series following from Grok Day, where I've got Adam Tackner, the company's Head of Corporate Development, Vice President of Corporate Development. He does a lot of things, despite the fact that this is a $1 billion plus valuation startup company in the uh, semiconductor and AI space. This is also a company that's moving fast, has a small but growing executive team, and I am excited to have Adam here join the show. Now, before Adam joins the show to talk all about what happened at Grok Day, just a quick set of disclaimers. Uh, this show is for information and entertainment purposes only, so please do not take anything that we are saying here on the show as investment advice, and I am an advisor to Grok, so that should be known. All right, rock and roll. Adam? Hi, Daniel. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, I noticed uh, funny that I did that video with you right before Grok Day and I put the same dress shirt back on. So anyone that watches this <laughs> might want to go back and see that and notice that I actually uh, must really like this plaid look. But uh, one was uh, before Thanksgiving. This is now a little bit after because Grok Day on December 2nd. Uh, what, a, what a great day. So much happened. Uh, company had the chance to really reintroduce itself in a big way. Uh, has had a lot of press lately about uh, talent acquisition, some really significant wins, but this was kind of a chance to give the whole shebang to people who attended Grok Day. So I guess first and foremost, um, you know, do me a favor because I did sort of set you up as the guru of many things, but just a quick introduction of yourself since I've got you here on the longer form show and just kind of what is a person in your role at a company like Grok do every day? Yeah, absolutely. It's a pleasure. Um, so yeah, my background is patent law. I started out in the 1990s. I'm, I'm trained as an electrical engineer, although I've never practiced as one. Uh, went straight to law school from there and was a patent attorney for a while. And then I got uh, pulled into the chip business. Um, uh, Andy Rappaport, who's now on our board of directors, called me up when I was at a law firm and it said, hey, I've got this little company that has this new idea called Wi-Fi. I jumped into that. That became a Theros Communications, um, and we grew that and, and sold it to Qualcomm. Then I was at Invensense in the MEMS business, sold that to TDK. Then I was at Google for a few years. And it was when I was at Google, actually, that I was talking to some of the really influential computer scientists there about the future of compute. And they told me about Jonathan and that, that on his, you know, his work on the TPU and that he had left and really taken this clean slate approach to... Uh, a whole new way of doing things. And that became Grok. And we met in uh, in 2018 and I joined the company uh, the following year. Absolutely, it's it's a great story. Uh, Jonathan Ross, by the way, fascinating guy. If you haven't checked it out, I did a 6.5 uh, Summit Pod uh, series video at our event last year with Jonathan. He talked about bringing the cost of compute down to zero, one of the big thesis of the company and Grok and what you guys are doing. And yeah, it is a, it is a really exciting company. I rarely, I'm very selective with advisory relationships where I get involved in early stage companies. But after spending some time with him, I was pretty blown away. And I said, look, this is a rocket ship, want to get involved. And so really pleased at what I've seen so far. Like I said, been kind of tracking the winds, been really interesting because, you know, most of my work on the on the vendor side is with the big established tech companies. So seeing some of the talent that you guys have brought in, there was a press release late, uh, recently I was quoted in because you guys had basically amassed a number of pretty high profile technology elite uh, experts across the Silicon Valley and worldwide that are coming over to Grok to help work with uh, you and Jonathan and the team on solving the problem. Uh, and then just after that, you guys had this big announcement about a partnership with Argon where you guys had some real breakthrough um, results that you guys could really kind of to, you know, beat your chest about, which in the startup world is huge. Um, so that was really exciting. Talk a little bit about you know the overall um, sort of storyline that you 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 gave at Grok Day and sort of what was the picture you were painting for the investors and technology enthusiasts that uh, showed up? Yeah, this was really an opportunity for us to talk a bit openly relative to our relatively quiet stance the last couple of years since we exited stealth mode about not only what our products are capable of, but what our partners and our customers are achieving uh, by working with Grok technology. The press release um, from Argonne National Laboratories, you know, Argonne is a relatively neutral arbiter of what's possible in compute. They maintain relationships with most of the companies in the space, both the startups and the well-established companies. And for them to come out and really say, look, this is a, you know, multiple hundred X 
uh, accelerant on a you know, really important sort of public policy and public health issue like COVID-19 drug discovery um, was just a uh, fantastic endorsement of the fundamental acceleration that the Grok architecture brings to market. And then, you know, yesterday we also talked about, um, uh, you know, all of the other uh, areas where we're seeing this financial risk analysis, um, linear algebra acceleration for scientific computing, um, LSTMs and the different models that, you know, just function at a whole new level that people haven't really seen before. So it was an exciting opportunity for us to really come out and help people understand what's possible with this with this blank slate approach. We were we're very excited we were able to do it. Yeah, I was really glad that uh, you know you're able to talk and really share so much. One of the benefits of being a, a private company and in the startup is until you go public, there's uh, the opportunity to kind of keep some of the work and the development that you're doing a little bit more private, but at the same time, you always want to be kind of making sure the market is aware, hey, we're, we're out there, we're making things happen. We've got, we got to plant our, our flags from time to time that we're doing breakthrough stuff so that people don't forget that there, while there are incumbents and there are the companies that everybody is, you know, everybody's hearing from regularly, there are other companies that are out there doing really important work trying to change the world. Um, Again, I mentioned Argon as an example at Grok Day. You guys were able to both theoretically and directly point to some customers and some customer examples. What were some of the most uh, interesting and exciting customer use cases, both generically and specifically, that you can share, or maybe that were shared at Grok Day that you could talk about a little bit to the audience? Yeah, absolutely. So, so I, I'd say there are three categories. We definitely gave a, a few more details on accelerated drug discovery path that Argon uh, had spoken about in, in the press release a couple weeks back. Um, and so we were able to expand on that. Um, Graham Steele and our marketing team talked about linear algebra and sort of the breadth of acceleration that we offer. Uh, Peter Lillian uh, on our engineering team talked about natural language processing and our ability to really accelerate BERT-based transformers. Um, we talked a lot about the, 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 the compiler, Andrew Ling, our compiler lead, um, terrific guy who's really building our team in Toronto. We have, I don't know, 25 or 30 people up there now. Um, and uh, they were able to talk really about the magic of the Grok compiler. And this is at the core of, of, of so many of these capabilities because the Grok architecture was a derivative of the compiler. First, we built a model of our compiler. Then we started designing the chip that would optimally produce sort of executed code at low latency and at massive scale. And so that's really where it all started. And he was able to show not only what we're capable of doing today, but that second derivative of growth, that massive acceleration, such that every time we can support a new mathematical operation, um, we'll be able to fan that out to many different workloads that are gonna have a lot of utility and in different verticals. So while others in this space might focus in on custom kernels for a particular vertical, and they'll put hundreds or even thousands of engineers on those kernels, we just don't need that. We have the opportunity to actually uh, support a whole lot of verticals with really intelligent, low level engineering at the compiler level. And then the compiler can handle all the customizations that are required for your particular vertical. So it's really that, that second derivative, that acceleration uh, of support and the ability to fan out that I think is one of the most exciting things to come out of Grok Day. Yeah, absolutely. It was, a, like I said, really encouraging day. And Adam, by the way, are people able to watch this back? If I put a link in the show notes, is it possible for people to get any of the highlights or is there going to be any sort of highlight reel? Because yeah, I, I imagine I some people, some people I don't, don't know, do that. I don't know that it'll be available yet, but, um, but yeah, there'll definitely be ways for people to look at a lot of this stuff. My guess is most of the content will end up on YouTube. I just don't know what the turnaround time is going to be for Mark and his team. Absolutely. I know you're not in the production team, but uh, I think if and when everybody out there that's watching this, what I will do is I'll definitely take uh, you know this uh, show notes and I'll add a link to the Grok Day highlights or any sort of write-up from Grok Day that's out there for people to digest it. But I like getting the cliff notes here. It's good. To, it's really good to hear from from you on this. So, you know, let's let's end, end this with sort of a, a 
simple, quick, punchy, thematic question that probably will be harder to answer than 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 you would want it to be. But what is like the one or two big takeaways you'd want somebody who spent uh, you know Grok Day with you, or that maybe spent this time in this conversation to be thinking about when it comes to Grok? Yeah, absolutely. It's it's a great question. I think f first and foremost that um, you don't actually have to deal with all of the difficulties of moving from one platform to another, that uh, companies like Grok, and I think exclusively, are really out to make this easy for you. And so if you're looking for a path for a partner in the long term that can really make compute uh, uh, relatively uh, easy to use and, um, and support a broadening set of applications that make sense for your space and give you incredible acceleration, then Grok is really the company exclusively that's gonna do that for you. Second is that there's gonna be more and more companies that are sort of building out the Grok ecosystem that you're gonna be able to partner with um, that will further accelerate and sort of ease the ability of working with us. Well, there you go, everybody. Uh, Grok Day, what a, what a good, solid com uh, conversation to the market. Like I said, depending whether you're an enthusiast, uh, you know, you're you're an investor that's tracking the semiconductor space, you're a competitor. I think there was a lot to be seen and heard from the company, and I'm expecting more. Uh, I'll be candid. I expect more. I expect continued innovation, uh, continued disruption. Semiconductors eat the world. I say it now. I say it all the time, and I'd say that this is the technology. Everybody likes the software but you got to run it on something. And the more we can you know, get all this data working, the more we can accelerate it, the more the software, these experiences can reach next levels. That could be solving uh, you know, next generation challenges in chemistry and compounds in the drug, uh, in, 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 in you know, developing drugs. That can be making cities smarter, or that could just be making shopping online better. But all those things happen with the support of companies like Grok that are doing things to constantly challenge the you know the incumbents and to build disruptive technologies to change the world. So, uh, you know, Adam, thanks so much for taking the time. Awesome job on Grok Day. Um, hope everybody out there had a chance to tune in. Hit those show notes. There'll be uh, you know some definite links for you to learn more about Grok or to kind of keep in touch with this topic. And I expect to see you or Jonathan or others from the Grok team joining me here more often on the Future of Tech webcast. But Adam. I'll make it easy and I'll say thanks a lot for, for, for joining me. Thanks everybody out there for tuning in. See you later. Thank you, Daniel.